remember the tour guide saying, it's nobody's fault. Actually, it's all of our fault. We all took part in letting all of this happen. Hmm. So did the Africans really sell some of their people in exchange for guns or whatever? Did our kings and queens really do that? So I just booked two tickets to the Whitney Plantation tour Monday, May 30th. I am excited. I've been waiting so long for this. It is in Wallace, Louisiana, which is kind of down south. I'm in North Louisiana right now, so it's going to take us about three hours and some minutes to get there. So, But I'm going to take y'all on this journey, whatever they allow me to show you guys. <sighs> yeah, so I'm about to get me some sleep because I got to be up at 8. Get ready for an awesome experience. So we've made it to the Whitney Plantation, Wallace, Louisiana. It's down south of Louisiana. Um, finally here, oh my goodness. Excitement. I'm gonna take you guys on this journey. Hope you guys enjoy. Did the Miss America contest get out of it? I'm going to come here. I'm glad you guys came. Yeah, Thanks for coming. Okay. And where are you from? I'm from Winfrey. You will feel strange today. You will not be the same person when you leave, the same person who came. Uh, there are many things that you will learn today uh, that were denied in your, in your education. Everybody got it? Yeah. Y'all yeah. ready to get started? Yeah. Yep. All righty. They just claimed the insurance policy and purchased the replacement. Your parents probably knew what they wanted to name you long before you were born. And so this is the stripping of a human dignity. This is the pushing of someone from being a human being to being a piece of property, simply a commodity. <clears throat> also on this wall, take note, because it's very deceptive. Congo Nation, Congo Nation. This is also the stripping of an essential birthright, and that is the knowledge of where you are from your culture, your tradition. And I say that because the Congo is not a country. The Congo nation refers to all of Central Africa. There are several countries in Central Africa, 
and even so there are several more different cultures from one side of Central Africa to the next. <laughs> we encourage you to ring the bells. Bells were a major form of communication on the plantation. Where they had to They were in the field before the sun came up. By the time they came out, the sun had long went down. We were talking 16 to 18 hour work days, six to seven days a week, depending on the owner. They are not fed in the field. They are called out of the fields to be fed. That's part of the reason for the bell. My least favorite spot on the tour. I actually don't like it at all. Wow. But it's a necessary part of history. We have to tell you all the whole story, and so we come here. And yes, it is. And I say this because if they put eight to ten people on one side of a slave cabin, you can imagine how many people they probably tried to cram in here. Oh. But the first thing I would like to make known is that there were no slave jails on plantation. Mm. This would not have been found on a plantation. And that's because they don't have time to lock you up, they need you working. Where you would have found this at is at the St. Louis Hotel, for example, where they're auctioning slaves. And it would have been in the courtyard or in the rear of the building. And when that domestic slave labor arrives from the Upper South, the owner checks into the hotel and he places his product in here. And this is why I say it is inhumane. You feel these temperatures, that thing is 100% iron. And these people may have been there for months at a time. And that's because slave auctions work like the stock market, supply and demand. So if you arrive in August, they are not in any rush to try to sell you. They're going to try to sell you in October when the grinding season starts. The demand for labor shoots up, therefore the value shoots up. So that's the first myth busted. The next myth is that during the international slave trade, these people were not emaciated, hungry, half naked, and looking like they're about to die on the block. White House, and also, if you saw the movie Django Unchained, you don't have to wonder what the inside of that blacksmith shop looks like because you've seen it already. The scene where Jamie Foxx is tied upside down and they're gonna brand him, oh. they filmed that in that blacksmith shop. Really? In this one right here. Oh. That White House over there. Direct from its original position. 
And so in those days, the river was very much closer to the front of the house than it is today. And it flooded a lot. No levee system. So the extra chairs, you got company coming. But that's not what it was for. It was for when the house flooded. The enslaved population comes in, breaks it down, and carries it outside and upstairs to the living area so it does not get wet. That is the wine cellar right there. And over here at this house, we didn't drink the cheap stuff. No ice spoon my tea. No $15 box of dinner wine. Not here, not the Walgreens CVS stuff. They drank Bordeaux, directly ordered from Bordeaux, France. And they did not order by the bottle, they ordered by the case. There's an inventory on this property where Miss Ozzie orders 200 empty wine bottles for the purposes of the enslaved population bottling the wine here on the property. That room over there is the pantry, and that's where the meals prepared in that detached kitchen will be brought in and made ready for service here at the dining room table. That room over there when you first walk in is the snipper room. The rooms further back are the offices where they counted the money, and that's why there are bars on the windows down here. And if you look right inside the door and on the floor to the right in the snipper room, you'll notice there is an olive jar that is half buried in the floor. And that was the refrigerator. Hmm. Here in Louisiana, we are surrounded and inundated with so much water that it doesn't matter how hot it is above ground. On any given day of the year, if you dig down about two feet, the ground temperature is constantly 38 to 40 degrees. So that is That's their refrigerator. refrigerator. Uh, there are no always stairwells or flats in this house, and that is for. incur their own debt and when they die your debt and their debt passes on to your grandchild mm. and it continues on like this for generations and generations and it's not until the 1970s our modern civil rights movement and also the mechanization of a lot of this work are the only things that contributed to it being stopped <laughs> but the point is that these former slaves would have been educated and literate then there was no way this could have ever been done to them and it was not only done to black people, the coal miners, yeah, white whites, Asians, yeah. Hispanics, 
All of them were under this system, sharecropping or wage working. My grandfather was a sharecropper. And that's why we preach education, enlightenment, and knowledge here. Because if these people had been educated, there was no way that anybody could have done this to them. The lack of knowledge is how they slipped slavery on us for another hundred years. And so today, we ask you to take a lot of pictures. Any knowledge that you gained here, even if it's only one thing, we're going to ask that you take those pictures and that knowledge away from here and share them with somebody. Pass that power on to someone else. You've been empowered. We expect you to leave and empower someone else. I want to thank you all for coming. You all were a very good group. Stayed together with me and moved along like I needed you all to. Didn't give me any extra headaches in this sun. Thank you all for that. <laughs> yes. So now we are at the how do you say it? Route. Route. It's not Route 61. R O U X 61. Route 61. I guess it's how you pronounce it. But it's in Natchez, Mississippi. So yeah, now we're chowing down on some crawfish at Tuesday. And yeah, then we're heading home. A seafood and grill place. <laughs> yeah, and then we're headed home afterwards. So. The Slavery Museum was awesome, as you guys can see. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you more details about it when I get home. All right now I'm going to eat. Okay, bye. So, hey you guys. It is now the day after this awesome experience um, at the Slavery Museum, Whitney Plantation in Wallace, Louisiana, which is South Louisiana. I noticed, I'm gonna give you all the whole rundown on how I feel and how it affected me, etc. So basically, I'm just gonna start off by saying it was definitely life changing. It was. Um. Let's see, we first got there, we went to the desk. They gave us a little lanyards or whatever to put on. We went for the one o'clock tour. Um, and as they say, as our tour guide told us that um, depending on which tour guide you get, your experience may be, I don't know, more in depth, or more loose, um, just depending on who you got and what information you know they shared with you but i feel like our tour guide was amazing he was packed with knowledge of the area the artifacts um it was pretty you know he had everything down like whatever question you had concerning the plantation and whatever he showed us he had an answer for it and that's what i liked um there were a few things i mean when you think of slavery you think of oh you know people were beaten you know against their will forced to do things labor um not even just working to death uh the women that were you know in slavery they work they sometimes worked as you know sex slaves for the master and um they would get pregnant and the child would be treated you know no less than no more than their own child you know that they would have with their wives whatever um if you had any type of um black in you they looked at you as you're a slave too you know what i mean like just because you were have white or whatever or the master's son you didn't get treated any better that, oh that was just an interesting fact there um oh my god one thing that really like blew my mind besides being on the very grounds that the slaves were on in slave jails and the cabins they slept in and 
sleeping on packs of Spanish moss as their mattress and besides all of that and the surreal feeling of actually being in the vicinity of spirits that still you know are on that land there were a few things that caught me off guard that I would have never guessed and you probably would have never known about specifically for the Louisiana area um Florida Leaf which is the symbol, the New Orleans Saints. Um, it's a symbol that you see a lot down here in Louisiana. That very symbol was used to brand the runaway slaves. If you ran away for the first time, they brand you. For what reason, I didn't catch. Um, another fact that I learned, some Negro children were bought and captured as pets. Like, if the master's wife was barren, she couldn't have kids or something like that for whatever reason. They'd purchase a young Negro child. The wife had her purchased as a pet, like a dog, pretty much. Not, not a human being, not a slave, but like a pet. And she slept on the floor, the foot of the bed, everything just like an animal but um also another thing which is something i kind of grasped long ago many of the foods that we eat like chitlins um pig feet you know crazy stuff like that kind of scraps that we find so delicious here in the south or wherever else um Specifically, that was basically originated from whatever leftovers the masters had, you know, the white people had, they would just hoop it to the slaves. It would be pig guts and things like that. Hint, hint, chitlins, which we just find so good, which they are. I'm sorry. I used to hate chitlins, but I like them now. I don't know. I'm just fat. I like to eat. So much, I learned so much, but these are the things that are sticking to my brain the most. African air conditioning. It's when trees are put in a row. The trees, the row of trees are like adjacent to the river. The air, I don't know, it makes the air funnel. It makes the air funnel into the house. And then it pushes the hot air. It pushes the hot air out of the house which is why i'm really mainly talking about the big house you know you heard the term big house like if you're in the big house the slaves were in the big house oh you were just you had it going on and then there were you know memorial monuments and things like that that basically told the story uh exact quotes of the slaves basically saying what would happen to them, what was done to them, or what they witnessed happen to somebody else. Um, if they ran away for the third or fourth time, the head got, you know, chopped off and then placed in public for the rest of the slaves to see. Um, there is so much in-depth things you can learn about slavery besides just getting beat i mean there was so much more to this and people black people i used to be one of these black people like i definitely used to be one of these black people oh i hated slave movies i still to this day hate slave movies but when you get the true essence the true authentic story from slaves themselves or just simply walking on the land, the very atmosphere they lived in and worked on and just, it's seriously life changing. Yeah, just, I don't know why some people are so afraid of healing. In order to heal, have to open a wound, let it heal from the inside.
and then out. And I feel like it's just so much more to learn. That was only the beginning. Never have I ever been interested in history. But after this experience, it has opened up a huge passageway in my brain and in my heart for any type of history. This isn't black history. This is the history of the world. <laughs>